Welcome back to my channel everybody. Today I'm here with my March reading plans. So first for reading challenges, I actually haven't officially decided which ones, like which books I want to read for each challenge. I made a list of options and then I'm just going to kind of like let myself see like how I feel. So the first one is the buzzword readathon and this month it is location. I have two on my TBR that could work for this. I actually have three technically. Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. This is one that I want to read because I really want to watch the movie but I've never read an Agatha Christie and I'm interested to see how I would feel about her writing. So I thought that this would be like a good opportunity um, to test out if I like it or not. So I thought that was a good one. I also have American as Paneer Pie. This is a middle grade that's on my 22 books to read in 2022 list and since it is like American, America, um, I'm counting it as a location. So if I feel like a mystery, I'll pick up Death on the Nile, but if I feel like something cute and fluffy, but still kind of a hard, I, I feel like that one is kind of still like a hard hitting middle grade, then I might pick that one up. There also is technically um, Mr. Penumbra's, Penumbra, Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore, technically bookstore, that's a location. So I do have this one too. Then for the TBR knockout challenge that I'm doing that I will leave linked down below just like I did in February, there are two prompts per month. And one of the prompts this month is shape shifting. This was really hard for me to find because almost no books on my TBR have shape shifting in the way that I think that it's meant to be. So I'm being a little sly with this one. The first one is The Inheritance of Orchidia Divina and I thought it said something about like how she like turns into a tree or something like that. Instead Orchidia is transformed. I don't know. I thought it said something about her turning into a tree. This is a very like magical book. We will see. I don't know. I'm gonna read this anyway and then if I feel like it fits the prompt I'm gonna pick this one. If I feel like it doesn't I'll just pick the other one that I have. But I'm gonna be reading this anyways. The other option that I have is King and the Dragonflies. This is one where his it's middle grade and his brother passes away and to him, to King, his brother like turns into a dragonfly. I don't know if his brother like actually like transforms into a butterfly or if it's just kind of like a reincarnation thing or if it's like oh it's just this little kid grieving and so he sees his brother in this dragonfly. I'm not quite sure because I haven't read it, but it does say the brother like transforms into a dragonfly in the synopsis. So I am gonna count that as shape-shifting. This one is one that's been on my TBR for a long time anyway, so it would be nice to get around to regardless, honestly. Then the other prompt is magic. So this one would technically count for magic too. So since I'm reading this regardless, even if it doesn't work for shape-shifting, it would work for magic. This one is also magic. This one would work for that as well as the location one, so. Both of these kind of fit multiple things. It just depends on what I get to and what I feel like getting to and then what what fits what prompts, you know? Then I have two books that I'm in the middle of that I need to finish. The first one is The Golden Couple. Um, this is a thriller that I am reading for uh, Thrill Seeker episode two. So very excited about that. So I just need to finish this one. I'm also in the middle of reading Project. Pride and Prejudice. I'm trying to read my way through the Penguin Classics. I know there's like 4,000, but it's just like a fun little challenge I'm doing with myself. It is very good, but I, when I read classics, I like really, really dive like super deep into them and I go like borderline overboard with it. It's a very easy and accessible book, but it's just, um, it's just that I like taking my time with it. And lately I've been really in the mood for like reading stuff, like reading as kind of escapism and more like mindless reading, to be honest. So something like this has been very seemingly intense, but I would like to get through this one this month. I don't want to carry it into April. Then I have other, these are just books that maybe I'm getting in from the library or just books that are, I don't know, just books I want to read or prioritize this month. Um, the first one is Rock, Paper, Scissors. This is one that I am getting my hold in from the library at some point this month, so I would like to read it. I'm very excited for this one. I loved, loved, loved his and hers, so I am very excited to see how this one plays out. Then I have the beautiful, it says Vampires Are Back, like on the cover right here, it literally says Vampires Are Back. So this could work for shape-shifting too, technically, because if you're going to count werewolves, you kind of have to count vampires. But then I've also heard that this isn't actually a vampire book and that it's not actually like very vampire-y at all. So I don't know. 
I think it's really mismarketed because a lot of people were saying they were expecting like a gothic New Orleans sort of vampire story and that's not what this is at all. So I don't know how to feel about this one. Regardless, it's coming in on Libby so I'll be able to listen to it while I am reading it which is always just nice. Helps me connect to the story better honestly. Um, plus it, it's getting off my physical TBR which is nice. Then I want to read Heartstopper Volume 2. I read Heartstopper Heartstopper Volume 1 in January and then I didn't read any of them in February and I feel like so like out of the loop with Heartstopper now especially since the show's about to come out so I would like to like maybe each month read one volume and just like stick with it that way. Then the last book that I want to read in March is Tools of Engagement. This one is one that I want to read just because I've read all the rest of the Hot and Hammered series and this is the last one so it would be really nice just to complete the series. I'm excited for this one. I have really enjoyed the Hot and Hammered series um, and these two characters that it focuses on in this book um, were two characters that I actually really enjoyed um, seeing in the previous two books and then it's always fun obviously in a romance series to see where the couples that you've read from before like kind of a where they are now situation. So that's everything that I want to read in March. Uh, leave your reading plans in a comment down below and subscribe and like this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!